Singapore is among those leading global efforts with the World Health Organization to make sure novel foods like insect protein and lab-grown meats are safe to eat. An alliance of scientists and regulators in what's called the Future Ready Food Safety Hub is now looking into the nutritional benefits of these alternative foods. Today is World Food Safety Day and I'm joined by Professor William Chen, the Hub's Director, and Dr. Ryan Newkirk, Technical Officer from the WHO's Nutrition and Food Safety Department. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me this evening. Um, so, Dr. Newkirk, you know, I, I want to start with you. The, we understand that uh, there was an online panel that um, also involved policymakers to discuss the uh, topic of unexpected food safety challenges. Give us an idea, an example of what some of these food safety challenges are that we are actually able to anticipate. What are they and how can we actually anticipate them? Yes, yeah, so hello. It's a privilege to be with you here on World Food Safety Day. So food safety is a critical issue that affects millions of people worldwide every year. Food safety legislation, regulations, guidance, and other activities can help keep our food safe. But as you mentioned, there are unexpected challenges. Things like climate change can affect many points in the food system. Flooding can ruin crops. Severe storms can damage transportation equipment. Power outages can cause spoiled food. But unexpected challenges go beyond climate-related issues, of course. These include recalls of contaminated food, supply chain issues resulting in shortages of common or important ingredients, and things like new foods or novel technologies. We've seen in an interconnected global food supply that local issues can quickly become international emergencies. So these unexpected challenges highlight the importance of regulators, food manufacturers, academic experts like Dr. Chen, and consumers to work together to increase food safety, to be better prepared for and respond to these unexpected challenges. And one key document that can help in this area is the World Health Organization's Global Strategy for Food Safety. Right, so um, Professor Cheng, you know, specific um, to Singapore, right? Should we prepare for any unexpected food safety challenges? And if that's the case, then what solutions or plans do we have for meeting um, these? Because, you know, as we heard that Dr. Newkirk said, it could be contamination, you know, in, in the food supply. Well, uh, as Dr. Uh, Newkirk uh, has uh, rightly pointed out, there are a lot of new challenges uh, facing the food supply chain, especially when we consider Singapore, uh, we import 90, more than 90% of food from 180 countries. So there are things that are beyond our control. So what we could do in Singapore is to establish uh, urban solutions so to make ourselves, our food system more resilient to all these uh, uncontrolled, you know, unpredictable uh, 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 challenges. So one way is uh, we, we have seen in the media this uh, urban farming, mm. that's one way. The other one would be uh, technology-driven uh, food production, like uh, Dr. Newkirk, uh, Newkirk pointed out, like uh, uh, insect protein is one, cultivated meat another one, and we also have uh, other way of uh, producing alternative protein sources like fermentation-based or plant-based uh, food uh, uh, production. Right, but Professor Chen, you know, these are, after all, novel foods, right? You know, we're talking about um, insect protein. Um, what is the concern here, you know, when it comes to these um, novel foods? Well, uh, besides nutritional benefit that we also need to establish, these uh, alternative food sources actually provide us with a certain level of resiliency against this uh, uh, disrupt, uh, disruption in the food supply chain. But uh, before we present this alternative food to consumers, we ought to make sure that they are safe for consumption. So for the in the case of uh, insect protein, for example, we know some of them are sort of uh, contain certain level of uh, uh, unknown or new allergy source, al allergen, for example. The other uh, uh, potential risk factor for insect protein would be, for example, they can accumulate heavy metal. Mm. And uh, in, the, we, in the processing of this insect protein into this uh, processed food, there are also certain level 
perhaps uh, contamination by the processing uh, process. So all these, uh, we are sort of uh, uh, establishing the new framework to understand and sort of predict and, and evaluate the risk factor. Right, so it, it's sort of anticipating, you know, speaking of um, food contamination, um, Dr. Newkirk, um, talk of food fraud. How serious a problem is this? And what is the impact of it on global food safety then? Yeah, so Glenda, uh, food fraud is a serious global issue that affects numerous countries and many, many people every year. There are different ways to think about food fraud, but one way to think of it is when a food manufacturer or a seller intentionally deceives the buyer or customer about what is in the food, its ingredients, the labeling of the food, or the quality of the food. And these things make food fraud serious for a few different reasons. One, it costs the food industry and consumers significant amounts of money every year. Two, it causes loss of confidence in food manufacturers and their products, regulators and their abilities, and the food supply in general. And finally, and most importantly, it can cause food safety issues, including food recalls, illnesses, and even deaths. But importantly, illnesses and deaths are relatively uncommon in food fraud incidents. Dr. Nuka, you know, I, I hear you saying that, you know, intentionally and um, the quality. So how can we detect food fraud using um, control systems that we have in place? Yeah, so there's a lot of good news here. So countries and academic institutions and, and subject matter experts like Dr. Chen are using science and risk-based approaches to detect food fraud with things like laboratory techniques, data collection, analysis, and reporting. The food industry is also a critical partner in detecting fraud. Knowing their suppliers, conducting random tests on those ingredients, and even considering implementing supplier verification control programs, these are important things industry can do. And regulators are also playing key roles. They're collecting data, prioritizing foods that are at higher risk to food fraud, and then they are sampling and testing these foods. And if those samples come back and they violate regulations or thresholds, then the regulators take action against those manufacturers or sellers. The global strategy on food safety that I mentioned earlier also includes many actions on food fraud. So together, we can address this really important global issue. Right. So, Professor Chen, you know, um, seeing all that, right, and, and we're hearing what Dr. Nuker is saying, you know, how are we in Singapore advancing food safety risk assessment and, you know, food safety control and, you know, the management... It, it, well, let's take, for example, the alternative foods with Singapore, right, as um, we're trying to be a world leader in the uh, regulatory approval here. Yeah, well, Singapore is the first country in the world mm. to have approved the sale and production of uh, cultivated meat. And that is uh, uh, later on followed by U.S. FDA and so on. Uh, so we are clearly uh, have established ourselves as a, as a leader in the uh, sort of regulatory approval of alternative food. But uh, moving forward, we also need to uh, sort of establish technology-driven risk assessment framework. And for that, uh, we have been working with not just with Singapore Food Agency, but also with uh, a Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and WHO to establish a framework of this uh, global regulatory uh, approval process. And at Fresh Future Ready Food Safety Hub, we are actually establishing technology-driven of uh, this uh, uh, risk assessment mm. uh, framework at the technical level. For example, we use uh, this, uh, uh, introduce this uh, digestive system to understand that all these potential risk factor after digestion, what would they become? So they, we call it in vitro digestion system to understand better the risk uh, factor of this uh, alternative food. Uh, we use the same strategy to also understand the nutritional benefit of this alternative food. Mm. So when we combine these uh, platform technology together, we can not only assess the risk 
factor, but also understand the nutritional benefit of these alternative foods, which is what consumers want to know. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, thank you so much for speaking to us, um, gentlemen. And I've been speaking with Professor William Chen from the Singapore Future Ready Food Safety Hub, as well as Dr. Ryan Newkirk from the World Health Organization.